I'm going to show you what dozens of people have told me on a previous video I should have showed you when I made that video. That is how to replace the Nikki carburetor with the Walboro carburetor. This is actually a pretty easy swap. It's not that hard to do and it's something that I think if you can take this carburetor apart and rebuild it, you can definitely take this off and replace it with a Walboro. This job probably takes about 15 to 20 minutes. If this sounds like something you want to do, welcome to the Bald Eagle 242 YouTube channel. Stick around and I'm going to show you how to get this done. First thing you'll want to do is go ahead and take this top cover off. There's just two bolts back here in the back, two bolts in the front. You may have to remove your oil dipstick to get it off of there. And then there's a hose that connects right here. I've already got the intake side of the uh, air cleaner box off. You've got two nuts right here. You just take these off. So you got a total of six with the two back here, the two there, two on your carburetor itself, and that removes everything from the top of the engine. The next thing you're going to want to do, if you don't already have a fuel shutoff in, find a way to pinch off your fuel line. If you've got any fuel in the tank, so you can just pinch this off. I've got a fuel shutoff, so I'm not going to use this, but these come in real handy. You just put it on there, pinch the line down slide that back that way you can shut the fuel off while you're working on this we're also going to replace this little fuel filter here the red and white fuel filters on these things really don't do a whole lot i'm gonna go ahead and take that one off and replace it with this one and anybody that tells you in the comments down below that these paper fuel filters don't work on gravity fed systems just like their comment and move on. When I install these, I like to put them in so they're kind of facing down. That way, if you do get any water in here, you can actually see it in here. And this also helps you to see sediment that's building up in here. Anytime you install one of these fuel filters, they've got an arrow on it that tells you how to install it. The thing to remember on these fuel filters is always have the fuel coming in on the side where you'll be able to see the sediment that accumulates inside the filter. In other words, if you put the fuel in this end, it's gonna be inside the filter, you're never gonna see it. So just keep that in mind when you're installing one of these style filters that you can see like this. For reference, the bolts that hold this cover on the plastic top cover are a 3 8 and the bolts that hold the cover on down here are a 7 16 This is the bolts that hold the little intake on here for your carburetor 7 16 The head on the studs is a 5 16 and this threads all the way through to here. Go ahead and take those all the way out. Tell you what, before we do that, just take a pair of needle nose pliers here and take off this clamp on your fuel line. Now, if you got your fuel shut off, there shouldn't be a whole lot comes out of this, but you might want to have a little container or something set in here just to get any fuel that does come out. Little plastic paint cups or something like this work very well for this. There will be a little bit of fuel come out of it. Shouldn't be too much though with the fuel shut off. Go ahead and take your studs out here. This is the intake gasket that goes between your carburetor and there, so just set that off. We'd probably get a new one with the new carburetor. We do have to take the wire off the solenoid here at the bottom. And this is something here I'm going to show you that you need to keep in mind when you're buying your new carburetor. The Walboro carburetors do come with a solenoid if you buy the correct one, but it has a different plug on it. You'll see on the one I buy, I buy the ones that do not have the solenoid on them, but you need to know something when you don't have the solenoid in here, and I'll show you after we get this installed. Without that solenoid on there, you take a chance on this thing backfiring when you kill the key. That's easily preventable though if you put a carburetor on without the solenoid, and I'll show you that when we get done here. First thing you wanna do here is take off your choke linkage. Just pull that down like that. This will fall out, so be careful with it. This here, you can just pull this spring out and then roll this carburetor under and that'll pop right out. That's all there is to getting this thing off. Something I'm gonna show you here that's one of the tricks that you have to use to get the Walboro carburetor to replace the Nikki. This choke right here, this one actually already has a cutout in it, but I'll show you when we put the Walboro carburetor in there. You gotta make sure that this is free because that is one of the problems here with replacing this with a Walboro. If this plastic piece is not designed to fit it, it's gonna hit and your choke's gonna stick or it's not gonna open all the way. So if you take this, it should fit right on there. Make sure that choke, this one's free. This one actually has the cutout for the Walboro carburetor. A lot of these are not notched out like that. So go ahead and put that on there. Before you bolt everything together, make sure this opens and closes freely, and this one does. If it doesn't, you need to take a little file or a Dremel tool and just notch that out right there. Hopefully that's showing up on camera there. But that has to be notched out to give that butterfly on that choke room to open and close. Another thing you have to do on the Walboro carburetor they have a little peg right here that has to be cut off because this will hit underneath this plastic cover. You don't need this for anything on this mower. Just take that and you can real easily just snip that off. Just get rid of that. And then if you compare these carburetors side by side, they pretty much are identical. 
as far as how they connect. So you're going to hook your throttle linkage up here, your choke linkage here. You do need to pay attention. Your linkage on this one came out of this farthest hole out. We got to make sure we hook it up the same way on this one. As long as that butterfly opens and closes, it doesn't hit on the intake. You literally just bolt this back on. And this carburetor, for reference there, I bought this last year. It was $13.75. I'll put it up on the screen. The purchase price actually bought this March 20th of 2022. So that's two years ago, $13.75. And this did come with the gasket to replace that. Put this one down here with the old carburetor. Go ahead and hook your linkage back up. I like to hook the rod up first and then we'll do the spring. We'll go ahead and roll that in there. This has the same hole already in it, just like the Nikki did. Hook that up there. Take your choke. This comes in from underneath. And then you can fish that back through this little slot right here in this bracket. Match that up here. Put your gasket in here. Put one of your studs through that. Get your gasket lined up here. Make sure this goes through the stud on this side too. I'm going to tighten this back down. This doesn't need to be super tight, but it needs to be tight enough that there's no chance of any air leaking in there. I call it one finger tight. I don't know what the torque spec is, but probably between 8 to 12 foot pounds, 110 inch pounds, something like that. Once again, I'll just verify. We'll go ahead and bolt this on or push this up on there. And that choke has to open very freely. That should be just as easy to move as that is right now. If your choke is any harder than that, notch this out. That'll be the biggest problem you'll have putting this on an older mower. Some of these uh, wall barrel style carburetors do have an angled knob coming out of them so you can cut this bend off in the hose. This one still has the bend in it, so we'll hook it up just like it was. Slide our hose clamp back up. All right, while we still got the fuel turned off here, We'll go ahead and swap this filter out. And then I like to go ahead and turn the fuel on while I'm finishing this up just so I can tell if I've got any leaks before I get everything together. And these little filters are good for sand or something big, but they're really not that good for true filtration. All right, again, put this on so the fuel comes in in the side where you can see if there's dirt on this paper filter. I don't think it really means anything. This one does have magnets in it. I don't know why you get metal in your fuel, but this does have a magnet in it to collect any metal that might get in it for whatever reason. Put that on there. And I know I'm going to edit a lot of the dead space out in this video, but this, like I said at the beginning, is literally 15 to 20 minutes to get this done. And I like this to aim uphill so that the fuel will collect any water down in here. As long as your fuel level is above the carburetor, it doesn't matter that that's coming uphill. This is still going to force it past there. Go ahead and open that up. We can see fuel starting to flow in there. Now, if you watch this, you'll see if there's any leaks or if the carburetor is overflowing, it'll start flowing fuel out of it. This piece right here, since I bought the carburetor that does not have the solenoid on it, just tuck it up under there somewhere. You do not need that with this carburetor. And I'll show you how to shut this mower off without it backfiring, without a solenoid on it. Whether you've got a carburetor that didn't have a solenoid on it or somebody has cut the solenoid plug off, that's a whole nother story. But I'll show you how to shut a mower off without making it backfire. Next thing we're going to do is just slide this little intake on here. Make sure you get this hose hooked up here as you put it on. We'll put our nuts back on here. And this already has a gasket in it, so I'm not going to put a new one in there, but make sure this little rubber gasket is still on yours. Sometimes that'll come off on the old carburetor. Alright, once we get this snug down here, go ahead and work your throttle linkage. Make sure your choke fully closes. Everything works like it's supposed to. That's minimum throttle. Bring that up, our choke opens up works exactly the same way as the Nikki carburetor. We can see our fuel filter is full. We don't see any fuel coming out of here. Go ahead and put the cover back on and this thing ought to start right up. All right, went ahead and put this top cover on. Like I said, there's two bolts back here. Your two bolts in the front. Put your air cleaner back in. Something else I'll tell you while you're doing this. If you have carburetor problems, go ahead and change your oil. There's a good chance that the fuel, if this overflowed, ran down into this intake and got into the engine. Depending on where the intake valve or exhaust valves are at, it allows oil to get down into the sump on the engine. So it's just a good practice anytime you have a carburetor problem. Go ahead and change your oil. I also went ahead 
ahead and check the throttle linkage to make sure the choke and everything still worked once I got this cover back on and that's all good. In the beginning of this video I said I'd kind of tell you why you may want to replace this Nikki carburetor with the wall barrel. The main thing is these Nikki carburetors when they're working they work good but they have so much rubber gaskets and o-rings in them that deteriorate over time. It's a constant hassle to have to rebuild them. I'll share a video up here that you guys might want to check if you're really just wanting to rebuild this Nikki carburetor. I've rebuilt plenty of them. I don't really have a problem with them, but I will tell you for the price of the kit to rebuild that, you can buy this carburetor for just slightly more. If you want to get the one with the solenoid on it, you'll just have to splice your wires in there or get the plug. Most of them come with an extra plug to splice into these because a lot of people do this. But the Walboro carburetor, even the aftermarket carburetor, I know you'll get a lot of comments down below about people that don't like these Chinese knockoff aftermarket carburetors, but 99% of the time, they work great. If you're going to buy a name brand Walboro carburetor, it's generally not worth the cost of the mower to do it, so that's why I use the knockoffs. But anyway, that's another story. All right, so let's get everything off of this thing and see what we got here. We got fuel in it. Our fuel is turned on. And guys, if you don't know this, when this is in line with your fuel, that's on. If it's turned like that, it's cutting the fuel off. So this should be in line, whether it's the angled one like this or a straight one. Make sure that's in line with the fuel. Still gotta put my hood back on, but let's try to start it here and see how easily this thing starts and see how smooth it runs with this brand new carburetor on it. All right, we got choke on. Has not been started yet. before you shut that key off and 90% of the time that will keep your mower from backfiring even if you don't have that solenoid on the bottom of the carburetor. Hopefully that'll get you lined out there with that Walboro carburetor to replace that Nikki. It's definitely a very easy job. I would recommend that over rebuilding the carburetor if you don't have a little bit of skills to do that. It's simple to change. If you found any value out of this video, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm trying to get a bunch more videos out over the rest of this summer. I'll post another video up right here. You might be interested. Thanks for watching. Until next time.